You got a dream, you got to protect it. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Gareth and I'm going to do a book review today of a book I was not expecting to read. Uh, genre I don't really read, but I'm reading it because of Michael K. Vaughan's challenge for June, which was June on the Range. So I've already done a video on the Sisters Brothers book and that was really good. And um, I followed that up, amongst other things, I was reading Dead Man's Hand which is a collection of short stories uh, by some really cool authors like Orson Scott Card, uh, Tad Williams, Joe Lonsdale, Alistair Reynolds, Ken Liu, all sorts of people. Um, and what happened was I read uh, the first two stories and I wasn't really feeling it and I've put a pause on it. So I can't include this book as part of the June on the Range challenge. But I've started it, and I'll probably get through it eventually. Uh, I'll just nip into it now and again, and uh, I will report back if there's some good ones in there. There probably will be some good ones in there, but the first two stories were just a bit okay. So I thought I'll leave that for a minute, because I didn't want to just sort of have it sort of drag in and then sort of stop me from reading. So um, I haven't DNF'd it, because I will finish it. And as it's a short story book, um, I won't need to sort of read it again if there's a big gap. Uh, so I haven't DNF'd it, but I have stopped it for a minute. But then I wanted to finish the month with this. Shane. Shane by Jack Schaefer. So um, this is a very famous book, and it was made into a very famous film. And uh, I have seen the film many years ago, but I couldn't really remember it. I, I kind of remember the gist of it. But, uh, and, and to be fair, what I remembered from it was very evident in the book. So I don't know if every beat of the plot is in the film, because it was so long ago that I saw it. I literally saw it as a teenager, so it was a long time ago. But um, I was very intrigued to read the book, especially there was a few other people that read it on Booktube for June on the Range. So it did spark my interest. So I've literally got it out of the library. I've got a library copy, as you can see from this. So I got, I got it out of the library. And because uh, I've got my book ban at the minute as well, so I couldn't just buy it. Well, there's something like this. I'd, I'd rather get out of the library anyway because I, I didn't know what I'd think. And that's not something I normally read. It was really good, though. Um, I really enjoyed it. I've just finished it. And uh, I think it's it's got all the hallmarks of what you'd want from a great story. I mean, it's got really well-drawn-out, interesting intriguing emotive characters it's got a family set up that works beautifully you know these characters are very real and their interactions are very real and their relationships are very real the character Shane is absolutely heroic in in every sense it's it's one of those things that's kind of become a cliche um, but probably wasn't a cliche then when did it when was it written it was written yeah, it was written in 1949 so um, it, but it probably wasn't a cliche but now obviously it's had such an influence and many other things that have had that kind of portrayal of a hero uh, has made that kind of hero a cliche but um, it really works well in the book. So, so what I mean by that kind of heroic cliche is um, very noble, always doing the right thing, guaranteed to do the right thing. The way that he's looked at by the town and by specifically the point of view character in the book, who's the boy, uh, Bobby, or Bob, Bob. He's called Bobby at one point, but Bob, yeah. Um, Bob absolutely looks up to him, kind of worships him, and knows that they're going to be safe because Shane's around and Shane's response to that is very underplayed he's very sure of himself but he's not cocky or overconfident he's just very quiet and his movements still um you know that kind of classic kind of thing that you get a lot in in a lot of like Clint Eastwood's 
um, portrayals of the uh, heroic gunfighter sort of thing. So um, I think, um, you know, you can see that influence there. But um, it, re it worked that kind of heroic portrayal does center the book and the stuff that's happening around it um, creates that tension. And that tension is genuinely there. I think um, it's, it's written really, really well. So there's a few set pieces where it's all kind of kicking off and some of it's on the brink of violence and some of it is the violent scenes. And in all of those scenes, either the ones that are on the brink, brink of violence or the ones that where it all um, gets a bit hectic, the writing's really good, very vivid and I, you don't want to put it down. And that was just earlier today as I was finishing this, I was getting to, there's about 20 pages before the end and I had to put it down because something was happening in the house and it was really annoying I had to put it down um, and then sort of obviously picked it up as soon as I could because I wanted to get to the end and I wanted to see what was going to happen next. And, you know, you're in there, you're fully immersed and that's down to how good the writing is. So uh, that was really cool. And it's really interesting, the, the, the relationship that Shane's got to the father character in the book. Um, the father character, who's Joe, so Joe's relationship to Shane, is quite a complex one, because they are kind of allies, but also they influence each other. They've encouraged each other to become the people that they are in the book. And um, Shane's respect for the family and respect for Joe makes him do what he does in the book. And... Shane's presence and how that gives Joe some confidence makes him do what he does in, in, in response to the threat they've got. So the threat they've got, the, f the threat that the family have got is this um, wealthy landowner that, wants, that basically wants their farm and wants to sort of take over their land. And they keep, keep refusing, but um, because he's a bully, he's trying to drive him out. And, you know, Shane sort of just turns up out of the blue and wants to help them out. So, you know, kind of a classic story, classic characters, but so well drawn out. And, uh, yeah, it's definitely worth reading. It's quite short, but there's a quite a lot packed in it. Um, the descriptions are really vivid. Um, it's just really good writing. And you don't, you don't really know how bad it's going to get for the characters that you're rooting for, which I think is really good. So... Um, even though there are some things in there that might be cliche, I don't think it feels predictable because of how it's written. So, yeah, massive success for me, this one, Shane. Um, thanks, Michael K. Vaughan, for encouraging all of us that have been doing this to read more westerns. That first book, Sisters Brothers, I really enjoyed. This one I really enjoyed. And um, I'm going to see what I, how far I get with this, because um, I'm sure that at some point there'll be some good stuff. Um, but as far as the novels go, um, I'm really pleased we've read this one. So this is number 14, I think it is, in my 30 book challenge. So when I get to 15, I'm going to do like a halfway point video about what I've read. Um, I'm really hoping to get through the 30 books before I break up for the summer. Um, it's a tall order and I've become really obsessed with reading as much as possible because I'm getting so frustrated about not being able to go out and buy books. Um, but it's my fault. I've put the ban on myself. But in the meantime, this was number 14 and a uh, really good book. So, yeah, Shane, classic. I really like this cover as well. I think it's, there's something um, really cool about how simplistic it is and how direct it is because clearly, in a lot of ways, um, that's one of the characters in the book. So, Shane by Jack Schaefer. Definitely recommended. Thank you. See you later. Bye. Paint me a picture of what it's like to be you. Upon your high chair